Hi and welcome to spotlight video number nine. There has been a lot going on over the past week, so let's get right into the news. First of all, we've just released an update to the auto referee that now includes the full refereeing behavior for the ball holding and also some initial handling of forceful contact. We have also included a couple of smaller and larger fixes to bugs that were reported by teams or some bugs we found ourselves. This is mostly concerning the player controller and the fixes include better time step management. The controller now properly handles when the socket buffer is having too many images in it. This is especially concerning when you're trying to request images larger than 320 times 240. And we now also have a more reliable management of clients reconnecting. We are expecting the next update to the auto referee and to the WeBoard simulator on April 14th, which then hopefully includes a more stable version of the forceful contact detection and behavior. And then the final release planned, as I said last week, for May 19th, which also includes the ball handling. Just as a quick reminder, we do now release all the WeBots related fixes and also the new updates on the RoboCup Humanoid League TC GitHub. So we have our fork of the WeBots repository and in the release branch on this fork, you will find all the updates concerning the All Referee and WeBot simulator used for the competition. So just make sure that you're always on our release branch if you are working with the um, WeBot simulator and the All Referee. If you're testing the auto referee and you find any issues or any unexpected behavior, don't hesitate to open issues in our GitHub repository as well for that. The other big thing that has been going on over the last week is the end of the review period for the robot models. So all teams that have submitted robot models um, have, have now hopefully received their reviews. So on Friday, you should have gotten an email including the reviews from the other teams looking at your robot models and also from the technical committee. And today we have provided the results of the automated validation of the robot models. Note that most teams did not receive an automated validation of their robot models. And this is because most teams have submitted robot models that are still and the severely violating constraints set by us, which made it impossible for the automated validation to actually examine the robot models. If this is the case for your team and you didn't receive a PDF with the results, then please um, look again at the meta reviews, what you should be fixing in your robot models, so that for the next update of the robot models, which you're supposed to provide by May 23rd, you are submitting a version that can also go through the automated validation. We will also make another update to the robot model specifications because we notice that there are some small clarifications necessary or some small misunderstandings. And there are also some updates necessary due to the ongoing development of the auto referee and some things we've noticed in the computational complexity of the robot models. So we will have more updates on this by next Monday, which is also when we are planning to provide an updated version of the robot model specifications. During the reviews of the robot models, we've noticed that a lot of teams actually put in quite a lot of effort into creating very realistically behaving and looking models, which is something that we are really glad to see. So the technical committee has decided that we want to reward this initiative by teams so in addition to the normal awards that are handed out for the performance during the games, we will also have a special set of awards for the most realistic robot models provided by teams. And this will be judged based on short presentations. So every team can give a short presentation on the last day of the tournament, just talking a little bit about the robot model, 
what is special about the robot model, maybe what is scientifically interesting, or how it was ensured that the robot model is very realistic. And then we'll have an expert jury uh, judging teams on the realism of the robot model. And we're very much looking forward to learning more about what um, kind of robot models teams have submitted and how this process have been um, done by teams. Another decision we have taken in the technical committee is the decision where the tournament will be hosted. So we can now finally confirm that the virtual RoboCup humanoid competition will be hosted on Amazon Web Services or AWS. We have now updated the server specifications accordingly. So you will find in the new server specifications details on the virtual machines that we use from AWS both to run the simulator instances, but also to run the robot controllers. So basically the instances given to teams where their robot controllers are run on. You can sign up for AWS yourself and try the entire competition setup as we'll be running it during the competition yourself at any point now. To make this even easier to, for teams, we are providing an image of the virtual machine used for the simulator. So if you are in the Frankfurt region on AWS, you can search for the RoboCup humanoid image for the server. And then you will be able to just spawn your own server instance based on our image. And you'll already find um, WeBots compiled and the game controller compiled in it and ready to just run. We will be providing updated images whenever we are making a release, an official release to the WeBots uh, simulator. So whenever this is done, a couple of hours later, you'll also find an updated image on AWS. And you're welcome to just try and test your team's uh, software now based on the real competition tournament. We will be making some more updates and provide some more details on this by Monday in two weeks. So then you'll also receive some more guidance on how you can set up your own infrastructure, exactly how we will be doing it on AWS. During the tournament, teams will be asked to provide their robot control software using Docker images. For this, the technical, the technical committee will provide a container registry for teams to upload their Docker images to. Teams are allowed to provide multiple Docker images for a single game. However, every individual Docker images image is bound to a maximum of five gigabytes in size. And you'll find details about this also in the updated robot and the updated server specifications. After the games were streamed on Twitch, teams will receive access to their log files. So log files that their robot controllers have been writing on the controller instances. And we will require teams to provide us with um, FTP server access to their to a local FTP server of their at your their university, for example, or in um, Amazon S3, so storage instance, which we can use to publish your log files to. This will be run as follows. Whenever the stream has finished, we will automatically start transfer of the data to the FTP server or AWS storage instance you have provided us with so that you will receive access to this data right away. And then it will delete it on our, um, on our servers that we are running. We are currently investigating how exactly the game logs or the official game logs will be provided to teams. We are looking into different versions, uh, ways of hosting this, and we hope we have some more insights and updates on this also by May 24th, when we will make a new updated version to the server specifications. For this, you can also expect some news on how the communication between robot controllers will work in the cloud. As we've announced before, we have uh, problems running both broadcast and multicast for different reasons. We're currently looking into setting up the virtual network to simulate a broadcasting behavior. We're not entirely sure yet if this is successful, but we'll have updates on this also by May 24th. In the beginning of June, we are holding a mock competition 
Just as a quick reminder what the mock competition is. The mock competition is both for us as organizers to test the entire infrastructure of the competition, making sure everything is going to run smoothly during the competition, but also for teams to actually have some practice games against other teams, try their controller software on the real instances we are running on and just like getting into the flow of the actual tournament setup. The application or the submission for this or the registration for this actually has been open now. You'll find the registration on our uh, RoboCup Humanoid submission form. You're now able to just create a new entry for the mock competition in kid size or adult size. You just have to provide some very basic data to sign up for this. We would be happy if um, a lot of teams are signing up to use this opportunity and also give us the opportunity to test our um, our instances as good as possible. The number of games every team uh, will play during the mock competition depends a little on how many teams will be signing up, but we are guaranteeing that every team will play at least two games, so one on Saturday and one on Sunday. Similar to the competition, games will be played and streamed between 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. Central European Summertime and detailed information on the exact streaming schedule will be released a week prior to the mock competition. Now the sign up, as I said, has already been opened. You can sign up until May 21st, so Friday in two weeks, and then we'll release more information on how the mock competition is exactly gonna be run by May 28th. Um, participation in this is completely free of charge for every team registered to the main tournament. And um, you are allowed to play with robot models that have not fully passed the validation yet. However, you need to ensure that your robot model is neither crashing the simulation nor slowing down the simulation a lot. So in case your robot model um, fulfills those two constraints, you are allowed to play with a robot model even as if it has not been marked as fully confirmed in the submission system. Unfortunately, we are still working on some final benchmarks on the competition infrastructure, which is mostly due to the bugs we've encountered in the player controllers, specifically when it comes to the image requests. So we are not able to do the full benchmarks as we wanted to. So we need to postpone the updates on the API specifications, the robot controller API specifications for another week. So we are now planning to release this by next Monday. So May 17th. And this already brings me to the upcoming deadlines for the coming weeks. Uh, as I said, we are expecting another update on the auto referee and the Webot simulator by the end of this week. So May 14th, this Friday. Then next Monday, we will get two new updated versions of specifications. So we will update the robot model specifications and the robot controller API specifications and release updates for this next Monday. May 19th, that is next Wednesday, we are expecting to release the full and final version of the auto referee and WeBots simulator. So then we will only make updates in case uh, bugs need to be fixed. The, setup, the sign up for the mock competition ends on May 21st, Friday in two weeks, and then on May 24th, that is the Monday after, we're expecting updates on the server specifications, including some information on the network infrastructure you will have in the cloud and some more details that I've specified before. As always, if you have any questions on all of the information I've been going through or anything else that's on your mind, don't hesitate to come to our office hours tomorrow. Also, if you have questions on the reviews you have received, don't hesitate to contact us either during the office hours tomorrow on Discord or in the forum. And otherwise, I'll see you with more updates next week.